Hello team, in this reporting quickie we'll be focusing on the introduction. In today's quickie we'll look at why the introduction is critical to your report, the two sets of introduction feedback, one poor and decent attempt, and finally finishing off with some resources to assist in going further than the examples to create an ace introduction. So, why is the introduction so important? The introduction is likely the first thing the marker reads and you only get one chance to make a good first impression. So you need to hook the reader early, along with establishing the wider context for the report, break this down in a specific area for the report, and lay up the research problem for the AIMS subsection. One way to think of the introduction is to work back from the AIMS. What do you need to understand to comprehend the AIMS? The aims are what entails for the rest of the report, therefore you can think of the introduction as the first domino, which, when knocked over, starts a cascade for the rest of the report. Introductions are infuriating because they seem simple. How can I screw up an introduction? It's rather easy. And this marking rubric that we've got in front of us here kind of keeps up this illusion, but they're actually very tricky. While it appears context is the only criteria for the introduction, there's more than meets the eye, which you'll see on the next slide. So here's a poor examples feedback. Now, it's because introductions can be quite lengthy and quite diverse. I can't show you a complete introduction and then discuss it as it would make this dull video even duller. So we'll just focus on some feedback of some exemplars that are somewhat imaginary. So hopefully you can follow the comments that these person, this person got for their introduction and you can implement the good practices or the, not fall for the same mistakes that they have. In this poor example, there's plenty to talk about, so we'll tackle these chronologically. The introduction is too short. The waiting for introduction is usually about 10%, and the length should be a kind of appropriate to the waiting. So a two-paragraph introduction isn't acceptable. Usually for the body of an introduction, aim for over a page. Some people say that maybe you should go for 10% of your overall word count, but I'm not really a stickler for word count, so just kind of stick to enough that there's enough to chew. The second point is the structure of the introduction is important, and this person requires refinement. The reader might know diddly squat about the subject, so make sure there's a low barrier to entry to understand it, and then lead them down a succinct path rather than jumping and interjecting other topics willy-nilly. Look at how your standard kind of news article, be it in The Guardian or Private Eye, is, um, is structured. They start with a kind of quick, snappy lead, and then they kind of work from there, and they make sure that the stuff is all in a flowing order. Next up is references. This person suffers, or this person's introduction suffers from a lack of references, saying that more references would be beneficial. References are very important, both the quantity and quality. However, this person never got a message about their quality. Um, so it's just the quantity, how many there are. We touch on references later on in this series. However, currently the number of, uh, the number of references is the only issue here. The introduction should be densely populated with references, likely more dense than anywhere else in your traditional report. So this is your chance to get all your references in early. The fourth and fifth comment are related and they focus on the two kind of associated uh, aspects of introduction. Well, in this example there's no background to the area, so there's kind of no context. They're not set us up with what is the area that we're looking at. But what they have done is they've told us what the problem is. So they've went straight in and not gave us the kind of interlude or the prelude to their actual problem. This is kind of like talking about the need for alternatives to passwords without talking about why do we need passwords. Overall, this wouldn't achieve a good mark due to all the kind of mentions above. It would be very short. So here is a decent example. There's plenty to talk about this one as well, so let's get into it. The introduction doesn't suffer from structural issues. This is pretty good. The introduction uses figures, which benefits the section. This is always a great move. Always try to include like a set piece, B 
be it like a, a graph or data or figures or just something that kind of isn't text um, in your introduction. If you grab the graphic from somewhere, a very good idea. Make sure you reference it. Again, this gets you another reference. Looks pretty good because obviously you didn't draw it in Microsoft Paint. We're all off to a winner. As mentioned before, both the quantity and quality of references are quite important. In this example, the quantity is there, but the quality is lacking. We'll touch on the quality later, but there has to be a... You're not going to be referencing, like, the Sun newspaper. You want to make sure they're going to authoritative sources. Um, look at, like, the BBC. Who are they saying reported on it first? Then you go to the person who reported on it first. For cybersecurity, that may be someone like the Register. Question 4 and 5 are similar to the previous example, but they're flipped. The example above includes excellent background information, but fails to present a point. It fails to get to the problem that we're looking at and investigating in our, um, in our this report. So when you're writing a report, make sure you present a conflict, be it the need for a solution, like a new authentication system, when we were talking about passwords earlier, backed up with recommendations to kind of act as your catalyst. If you kind of say that there is a, a need for a, a new authentication method and you get a wee couple of references in there, then that can kind of get the ball rolling when it comes to your aims and you'll be able to jump in and say, there's a need for new authentication methods, passwords aren't making it anymore, we need to investigate more. Boom, there you go. Overall, this example would achieve a good mark, but not a great mark. It's still missing that problem, which is very vital to keep it all cohesive together. Those two bits at the bottom, the, the, the background and the problem, are probably the most important when it comes to the introduction. Now, before we get on to the further resources, if you come to expect, I've compiled a list of quick tips which should help you avoid making some of the mistakes mentioned in the feedback. Firstly, always include a figure. As the saying goes, a picture tells a thousand words. That's about a good page. Um, so make sure you tie it into the comfort, uh, tie it into your content of your introduction, and make sure you reference it appropriately. This can just hit so many birds with one stone. Brilliant if you do it. In a similar vein, reference it should be like a jungle of references in your introduction. The more, the merrier. Thirdly, if you're struggling about, I don't know how to structure my introduction. Think about the three paragraph structure. Now, don't take this too literally. Three paragraphs is, doesn't need to be three paragraphs. You can do more than three paragraphs, but three paragraphs should be like the minimum here. Establish the wider context in your first paragraph. Then, present your research niche, what you're going to be specifically focusing on in your second paragraph. And in the third one, state the research problem that you're going to tackle. So kind of start wider, maybe start for like authentication methods, then present your research niche, so like the use of passwords, and then thirdly, why passwords are bad and they need to be fixed, for example. Finally, I've included these two optional paragraphs. These are great when it's more of an extensive report. The structure paragraph simply says what each section will consist of. So you say that the remainder of this paper will continue as follows, in the methodology, the methods will be listed and whatnot. The scope paragraph, however, kind of just says what is not going to be covered. So if you're going to do, I don't know, um, looking at buffer overflows and, uh, yeah, just looking at buffer overflows, you're going to say that I'm not going to focus on modern Windows OS due to contemporary countermeasures. It just says that... Um, that you are aware of the kind of limitations of your report before you even get into it. That's a very good paragraph to have. It's a very good paragraph to have to make sure you're aware or make sure the reader's aware that you know that you are limited to a very narrow scope. Both these kind of paragraphs you can actually find on PhraseBank on the right hand side here. This website has saved my bacon a load of times. I absolutely love this website. And it gives you a bunch of uh, starter sentences, which you can then tailor towards what you're going to be in your report. Obviously, this one here is a little bit, um, I don't know, old-fashioned when it talks about recently there has been renewed interest in. But kind of that kind of stuff can kind of help you jog your mind, say, what am I going to say for my sentence? 
other things I would recommend here. Have a look at the Oxford Brooks one. And then there's a tweet here from a professor at Cambridge, which is a very good one when it comes to um, making sure that your credibility is there when you write your introductions. So in summary, this episode has addressed how to write the introduction of your report. From the feedback of the examples given, we've seen mistakes we want to not do ourselves. And we've seen some good practices which we can implement to make sure we get a good grade. We've also seen some further uh, reading and some quick tips that we can pick up on and hopefully implement into our introduction. And with that, the episode is over. I hope you've enjoyed it and good luck.